Hello, my name is Cassandra Locus, and I'm a graduate student in astronomy at The Ohio State University. Today, I'm going to tell you about my paper, Modeling Lyman Alpha Forest Cross-Correlations with LIMAS, which I worked on with a number of collaborators, including my advisor, David Weinberg. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey's BOSS, or Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, observed over 100,000 quasar spectra over 10,000 square degrees on the sky. As the light from a distant quasar travels to us, it passes through the intergalactic medium, where it can be absorbed by clouds of neutral hydrogen gas by the Lyman Alpha transition. Each gas cloud has a different redshift that corresponds to its position along the line of sight to the quasar, and the pattern of absorption in a quasar spectrum is called the Lyman Alpha forest. By studying the spectra of a large number of quasars close to each other on the sky, like in BOSS, we can reconstruct a 3D picture of where the neutral hydrogen gas clouds are in space. These clouds can be hosts to newly forming galaxies, and we'd like to know how the level of absorption relates to the mass of the dark matter halo hosting the gas cloud. This can tell us how the halo mass plays a role in galaxy formation. More massive halos will contain more hydrogen gas and therefore will correlate with more absorption and less flux in the simulated quasar spectra. This inverse relationship between mass and flux causes the correlations to be negative, and stronger correlations are more negative. LIMAS, or the Lyman Alpha Mass Association Scheme, is a method for predicting the Lyman Alpha absorption from cosmological dark matter-only simulations. In this paper, we use LIMAS to predict the cross-correlation between simulated dark matter halos and the simulated Lyman Alpha forest. This relation is not fully deterministic, so it is necessary to have probability distribution functions of Lyman Alpha absorption that are dependent on the underlying dark matter density. Calibrating these PDFs requires a fully hydrodynamic and cosmological simulation, which due to computing time constraints cannot be done on very large volumes. This is where LIMAS really shines. It uses a 100 cubic megaparsec hydrodynamic simulation to calibrate the absorption probabilities, then applies the PDFs to a larger dark matter only simulation for a quick and computationally effective way of determining the Lyman alpha absorption in the large simulation. More details about how LIMAS works can be found in the first paper by Sebastien Peroni et al. published in 2014. After empirically testing several functional forms, we found that a Lorentz profile seems to fit the LIMAS-produced cross-correlations well, at least by eye. Here, we have the correlation as a function of line-of-sight position for a single range of dark matter halo masses in several transverse separation bins. These bins measure distance from the halo in a direction perpendicular to the line of sight. The strength of the correlation decreases with increasing line of sight or transverse separation and increases with increasing halo mass, as expected. We apply this functional form to several halo mass and transverse separation bins to look for trends in the best fit parameters. The strength of the cross correlation, measured by its absolute value at a line of sight distance from the halo of zero megaparsecs, has clear trends with both halo mass and transverse separation. The strength of the correlation follows a power law fit as a function of halo mass, with the overall normalization set by the transverse separation bin. Smaller bins, which represent transverse distances closer to the halo, show a stronger correlation, as do larger mass halos. Our best fit power laws are similar to the renormalized halo bias mass relation from Tinker et al. 2010, plotted here as dashed lines in all but the smallest transverse separation bin. The width of the cross correlation depends only on the transverse separation bin, not on the halo mass range, and the width appears to be linear. We fit a single linear function to all mass bins at once. These fits provide us a simple form to model the cross correlations between the Lyman alpha forest and dark matter halos that depends only on the halo mass and the distance from the center of mass of the halo. Now we can compare the LIMAS correlations to the measured cross correlations between the forest and quasars or damped Lyman alpha systems. By fitting the data measured from BOSS in Font Ribera et al. 2012 and 2013, we can constrain the mass of the dark matter halos that host quasars or DLAs. Here, the green triangles are the measured cross correlation between the Lyman alpha forest and quasars from Font Ribera et al. 2013. We found that the correlation for any halo mass is significantly stronger than the data at small scales, even if the same mass fits the data well at large scales, as shown by the dashed line. This discrepancy can be fixed by realizing that there may be measurement errors in the redshift of the quasars. If we include Gaussian RMS redshift errors, which simply convolve the cross-correlation with a Gaussian function, then we can better fit the data. 
we find that we need a redshift error for quasars of 399 kilometers per second, and our best fit halo mass is then 1.51 times 10 to the 12 solar masses, which corresponds to a halo bias of 3.18. We can perform the same analysis for the cross-correlation between the forest and damped Lyman Alpha systems. Here, the data are from Font Ribera et al. 2012, also measured from BOSS. Again, we need RMS redshift errors to better fit the data at small scales. We find that a redshift error of 252 kilometers per second and a halo mass of 0.69 times 10 to the 12 solar masses, corresponding to a halo bias of 2.39, fit the data well. In summary, we use the computationally efficient and accurate scheme, LEMOS, to analyze how the cross-correlation between the Lyman Alpha forest and dark matter halos depends on halo mass and distance from the halo. We developed a simple functional form to describe these cross-correlations and compared them to observations of quasars and DLAs from BOSS. We were able to constrain the host dark matter halo mass of these objects and found a potential way to estimate the redshift error of the measurements. The full paper goes into several topics not discussed here, such as testing of LEMOS on different simulations and comparisons of LEMOS to linear theory. It is available on the archive. Thanks for watching!